The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 83, Nasdaq up 11, S&P's up 4.5, Gold contract up eleven dollars and forty cents, trading at thirteen forty an ounce. You got silver up fifteen cents, fourteen dollars ninety two cents an ounce. Bottom line, the uh, metal market, folks. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, gold has got uh, quite a bid since the uh, last uh, five days. Silver got the bid two days ago. It's following through. Light sweet crude numbers come out last night. Bottom line, plenty of energy, man. Okay. We we you know you had a build last night. We'll get the EIA out this morning. Down 75, uh, no, down, uh, yep. yeah, down 75 cents, 52 dollars, uh, 72 cents. Notes and bonds, higher price, lower yield. You get the 10-year note up uh, eight ticks, 127.07. 30-year bond up third, up six, at 153.28. And King Dollar, King Dollar down 64 ticks, trading 96, 935. Now, what King Dollar is done, folks. This is the first time since last October. This would be the fourth day that you actually have lower price and you have volume behind the move. Each time that King Dollar had gone to highs. It died on volume, but yet when it pulled back, you didn't have the volume. This is a this, this is the fourth day in a row. We already have volume inside King Dollar on the way down. Euro is at 112 to 1 U.S. dollar. The yen is at 108, and the pound is at 127.24 to 1 U.S. dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Pick a swim as we do each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, outstanding program. You want to understand the option market, the strategies inside the option market, the future market, great program. If you haven't test-driven yet the Thinkorswim platform, real easy to do. Just go to TFNN, hit the banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money, as you can follow Kevin and his team every trading day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. How we doing? Good morning, Kevin. We're doing good, you know. All right, guys. Here's Here's... The way I see this market, I saw something this morning. I heard it, and I checked it out. The ten-year yield, yes. currently trading 2.1, yeah. right, right on the nose, 2.1 percent. 21 of the 30 Dow Industrial stocks now have a dividend yield higher than the ten-year yield. Pretty right? Cool. Think about this: IBM, 4.8 percent. Dividend yield. Caterpillar, 3.3% dividend yield. Dow DuPont, 5.5% dividend yield. Verizon, an American company, you know, sheltered from everything that's going on with tariffs and, and the dollar, foreign markets, 4.2% dividend yield. 21 of the 30 Dow industrial stocks are now trading. That's why lower rates should lead eventually to higher stocks and that's what you saw yesterday yeah you know it's you know it's amazing to me and has been for a long period of time like verizon ma bell it's amazing yeah. they they've they've always paid a nice yield and i mean they're not going away i mean they, they, their, their revenue model is like insane like with verizon as you said 4.24 they're taking 131 billion dollars not bad right you know right exactly so I mean, I think that th this is a vital, probably, area of where we are in this overall economy right now and what people maybe should be looking at when they look at protection and where we are if this environment is lower rates for longer, right? Which now, Lael Brainerd's out this morning talking about lower rates and they'll, they'll do whatever they need to do. and. It's like they're. It's like our FOMC is doing their Mario Draghi imitation, basically saying we'll do whatever it takes, right, to keep to sustain the momentum of this market. So, pretty interesting. I, I don't remember, Tom. You tell me. I don't remember in my trading career, a Fed acting based on low inflation. I just don't remember it. I listen, man. I totally agree that, you know, the bond market has got us lower rates. The, the, the bond market's been talking like, okay, we're going to lower rates. But fundamentally, it's still really hard to figure out. The only right. time that, that, you know, you really get lower rates, folks, is that when you see that an economy has already gone down, not 
that people are speculating that it's going to go down, all right? So it's, it's pretty wild, man. I mean, it, it's like, you know, every time... You, yeah, I was just going to say, you got to throw out that jobs number from this morning, right? Talk yes. about another variable, though, oh, yeah. in uh, the lowest number in nine years. My ears went, whoa. Yeah. Um, it didn't help, Tommy. It certainly didn't help, did yeah. it? Yeah. And, you know, what does happen... We know that perception is everything. So if these big companies stop pulling back on spending, sure. that, that's, that's a number. You know what I mean? And maybe that's what the market is saying. The gold market's definitely saying that we, we're going to go lower. I mean, uh, you know, that's a very tiny market, folks. And you can see what's happening here. There, you know, um, I was looking at this number yesterday, Kevin. So, and, you know, the, the GLD, which is the largest, you know, gold ETF, that was the largest acceleration. They had it by uh, two and a half ton on Tuesday, um, that was the largest acceleration since July. And and what happens here, folks, this is where the chicken and the egg comes, okay? That if they have to do that, that pushes the price of physical gold up. And then, of course, the price of physical gold goes up. Then as soon as the GLD opens again, at the end of the day, they get to buy more. Sure. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's really a wild one when you take a look at it here, no doubt. Yeah, it's really the reaction of gold to, I mean, you know, the dollar has come back since early this morning yes and and there and gold is off its highs as well but boy when the dollar broke you know you and i've talked about this a couple of times and i talked with ben lichtenstein about this a lot when, when the dollar breaks gold is going to at least hold and be firm and you saw that today i mean gold's still up nine bucks yeah oh there's there's, there's you know there's all there's all there's no doubt there's a lot to it and and right. you know, when we take a look at the the index in general, you know, we'll see whether we keep getting followed through. This is, uh, as I, you know, I just did that update, and you can see that this is the first time since last October that we actually got three days down with volume, that we actually got selling. So a um, little bit different twist there, no doubt. Um, and the interest rates, um, they are what they are. In fact, as we're talking right here, one second, because as we're talking, it looks to me like the 30-year bond just gave it up. Is that we just, did we just come down that fast? The, the, it was only, I think, positive a tick or two. Now it's negative a tick or two. Oh, okay. The 10-year had been up about six ticks. I okay. noticed there was a little divergence in terms of Pretty the 10-year. Pretty interesting, guys. How about this? The SPX is up 7.5 points, and the VIX is up. 30 cents today. <laughs> yeah. P pretty interesting uh, action there. Well, there's, there's no doubt. And this is why, folks, you know, if you want to get, understand the option market, understand the strategies inside the option market, great program. 11 to 12, you really can wrap your head around it. You know what's so cool in a market like this, Kevin, that it's moving so fast that folks can, un can get to understand the strategy is much quicker because we're moving so quick. How sure. about GameStop, 33%? Oh. Is that a quick oh. move? Oh, my God. You know, we called that, we talked about that a little bit yesterday. And remember, they've got a new CEO, they've got a new management team, new, new, new kind of management structure. But, you know, a brick-and-mortar seller of video games, this could be just a long goodbye yeah, the yeah. numbers are staggering on the revenue drop off. It yeah. was like 1.8 billion to 1.5. Right. Um, and, yeah. and the, did you see the hardware? The hardware number was down minus 35%. Okay. To be fair though, I said to myself, how are they still taking in 1.5 billion, know, right? Yeah, so know, that speaks man. to exactly. like my goodness cuz they've really I hung on for a while and it seems almost inevitable. That's really? a tough one. You're right, Tommy. Yeah. That seems like a lot of revenue. Oof. Yeah, we'd love to take that in, wouldn't we? <laughs> man, they got a task. <laughs> Folks, right here 45 minutes from now. Kevin, thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it. We Look forward to the program in 45 minutes. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Kevin. Have a great one. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 114. NASDAQ is up 12. SP is up 7. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up at 103. You get the NASDAQ up six. S&Ps are up five and a half. And uh, this market's having a tough time uh, holding any type of price. You know, you, you got, you know, my take on this is that, you know, we're setting up a B2C and ABC structure on the way down. So we'll see how this shakes out. Uh, what we would need is that we need a contraction of volume out here again today. You know, yesterday you did the 72 million. Bottom line is that you're going into 127. You know, you're going into 70 you're going into 98. So we'll see how this shakes out. You know, I really thought that the S&P could get a little bit higher, though. I was looking for that, this thing to go up to like 284. You only made 282.39 thus okay. far. Uh, we take a look at the NDX. Now, the NDX is still the weakest indice out here. This is, you know, you can, the differential, you know, it's like, okay, because Q's make it to, you know, the 178.06. Well, we'll find out. Seems like the whole uh, Nasdaq's under antitrust investigation. Man. <laughs> there's no doubt. No, <laughs> it's they, pretty there's, close. There's, 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 At least the, the leaders the of the pack the are, large, man. The large stocks. The Fang stocks definitely I mean, are. No. The only one probably not rarely brought into that was uh, Netflix. I know. You know, and it makes sense, as in they're right. they're not a monopoly, man. Not because right. guess who they're competing with? Amazon directly, Disney, all that. So right. the one thing uh, right. they have on their side is no antitrust, right. probably at least for the foreseeable future. Even as a big leader, which is kind of a cool spot to be I, in. It, right? it, compared to, oh. uh, you know, imagine if you're uh, Reed Hastings, right? Okay. You must be sitting there like CEO in heaven. of Netflix, of yeah, course. Yeah, because what's happening, folks, is that. You know, everyone only has so many employees to go after things. Or capital. And right. They're going to have their right. hands full. Oh, you, you, know know I mean? that, you know that you know. Uh, the Facebook, yeah. the Googles, they're, they're making sure their legal team oh. is assembled. Right. And, um, right. That's, that's the, then their lobbying team, I'm sure, as well. Oh, yeah. All right. Oil. oil. Let's okay. jump over. All right. So we'll close this out. Oil, some volatility here. Yeah. When those numbers come out last night, you can see it was a one-way route. Where are we? Right. Right. Yeah, no, no, buck. for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, so there's your 430 time last night. We were trading at about 5350, call it. Yeah. And you tanked to about 5280 on that number. And we've kind of hung out a little bit of oscillation, but now we're kind of just under that number, 5266. And we're looking at the price of July crude. I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to jump into those commodity spreads, jump into crude. And uh, let's see where these line up. We'll start at the 11s, 
Contract strain of 5265, not bad. We're going to have 5275 that we can gain some exposure. There's going to be your bullish trade, slightly out of the money, right? About 10, 12 pennies. So it's all going to be premium, 15 yeah. bucks. Same buck 50 to the downside. You'd be selling this one. This time you have 12 cents of intrinsic value. So that's going to be 12 pennies plus a similar 15 of premium. So you're looking at 43. Okay. Call it 45 cents with some commissions. Right. Um, call it 50 cents for even math if you want a little profit. You, and can, you can get that kind of movement today. Oh, for know? sure, right? Yeah. And especially, keeping in mind, so you got 15 cents start to the, to the downside. Okay. So your profit becomes um, 52.25 to the downside or 53.25 to the upside. And you can see how a little bit bearish there, but exposure for a buck 50 almost in both directions. Let's see where the noons line up. All right, same exact price point. That's always nice. There's your bullish trade. You're trading at 5260. This is costing. So this, uh, that's uh, did I do that right? Let me just close this to make sure. 5275. Yep, these are identical. Top one's still 11. We're ticking to 15. And yeah, that's a lot more premium, it, right? Isn't it a lot less? No, it's no. a lot more, as in uh, Five pennies. from okay, 15. Yeah. So this is moving around a bit. We're now at 52.61. Right. And that's 52.97, 52.89. Yep, yeah. and you can okay. see the market ticking, all right? Um, three pennies, not bad for a bid offer there. Uh, but the bullish, so we'll close out the 11th. Bullish noon, costing you 21. That one being out of the money, of course. We'll open back up the noons. You look at your bearish trade. <clears throat> This is going to be the expensive one with some value, 36, 57. Well, we're going from 45 to 57. Yeah. Almost appropriate, right? Not not bad, but a so little. The, so the market, this is pretty cool, folks. So that market is pricing in that, yeah, it's going to come out, but then they don't know there's going to be movement here. I just have to put, we're, we're 15 cents away from the, the perfect spot, and that's adding right. to the cost of these. Right. Just, you know, right. when we pull them up. Usually the ideal, right, is that the contract's trading at 52.75, trading 15 pennies away. Right. So but I'm that's, talking about the difference of just the 11 to the 12. That's a big. That's a lot bigger spread than we normally used to do, meaning 13 pennies. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that might be close. It is like 10 pennies, maybe. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's, that seems to me a, a lot for an hour. It sometimes. So what, what ends up happening is that this is where inside of the option market folks okay that we'll see how close they get do you know what i'm saying as yeah. to as to you know I mean, what I kind of movement we get i only look at it as in they're adding about five pennies to each side for an hour right so that's not two they're at least going to be adding like three or four pennies to you know so i'm just really that it's 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 pretty appropriate but again a uh, little pricey because you're paying for 15 cents which is you know so the 11s were 45 bucks the, the noons are 55, 60, right, where, wherever we're at. And of that, though, 15 of that is intrinsic value, which you kind of don't want to be paying for, right? right. That's a big percentage no, of the money you're sure. putting up. And you can see how big of a difference is when they line up so perfectly, which is nice sometimes. Um, but we'll see. 1024, right? And uh, we just jumped in there. So the market, in terms of what they're looking for, they have the crude oil, and um, somewhere between, usually what happens is the survey number is an early number. I think that number might start to get calculated prior to the number last night for okay. the API. Yeah. And then when the API comes out, people start um, cluing into that hint, and so you're looking for probably closer to even right now, to a decline of about 300,000 barrels. Isn't that wild? And, and, and so what, ha what has happened, I, I believe last night we had a good size build. So okay. th this here is saying that we have a decline. I just put in what we just put in a two billion, a two million build, right? Two million builds. Yeah. So um, let's see if, uh, whoops, let's see if the top live comes up as, uh, here we go. Maybe they give us a hint of what that API sometimes last night. Yes, three million barrel build. There yeah. you go, crude. Bit right. of pressure from API data, so three million barrel build. Um, pressure could worsen, worsen if the AI data shows that the survey is overly optimistic. In the gasoline and distillate surveys, there's also optimism that at risk of a letdown similar to last week when surprise gasoline build helped drag WTI down to the low 50s. Right, and the gasoline build in the uh, last night was big too, you know, which, you know. So let's see, they got, uh, where the are we The distilt at? was huge. Okay. So the distilt is, is the 
you know, jet yeah. fuel um, okay. and heating fuel. I mean, it was it was it was the biggest one out there since uh, about a year. You know? Always interesting how the fundamental factors come into this. Of course, we're talking about a commodity, man. You got to refine it. You got to move it around the country. Yeah. We're in summer season. You got storms going on. So they got the effects of the Midwest and Great Plains flooding are likely to finally hit Cushing this week after a key outbound pipeline was forced to shut down, while a number of refiners cut runs. Hmm. So there are uh, there might be a glut right stuck there that they can't can't get it out they can't refine it that will likely put more pressure on prompt prices and the spread even as summer demand uh, means refineries ramp up their facilities refineries have been running below normal for this time of year we keep seeing that as we do these on Wednesday and at the lowest since 2016 that could be barriers for crude draws but could also point to a gasoline draw depending on what happens with the imports we'll see what happens stay right there folks Tommy and I are coming right back we have the Dow up 120 Nasdaq is flat S&P's are up four and a half gold's up 930 uh, silver's up at 13 cents and you get the king dollar down at 89 ticks Tommy and I come right back folks stay right there folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, check this number out. 
We got some oil on our hands, we baby? We got big oil, man. 6.77 million barrels. Watch, uh, watch out, man. Yeah. Um, you got gas inventories up 3.21. We're going to jump back to the chart. I think we're going to see a decrease in the price of crude. Slightly. That's what you would think. And boom. Boom. There you go, man. Whoa, that is a decrease. You're talking about uh, we just dropped almost a dollar. Yep. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. 51 handle in the price of crude, 7 million barrel build. Pretty remarkable gas uh, gas with the build as well. And, uh, of course, as they say. Look at that gasoline. Yeah. Just the build? Yeah. Yeah. It's 3.2. And we're in yeah. driving season. Yep. You know, bottom line is that energy's out there. And, you know, you got to admit, 44 bucks, that's my take. We're going to December, th the, you know, 26 level here. So. Well, this move's going to help in that journey. Yeah, um, no doubt, man. So these contracts we're looking at, just keep it in mind, you really, your, your max profit there, where are we looking? 52.75, uh, right? Now, what's interesting is this actually clawed right back up to that, if we were following it in the final three minutes, where you could have gotten... Um, oh. Equal exposure. We got okay. the move in the direction you wanted anyway, but you can see that 1025 bar just crept from 5260, which is where we were looking at it, yeah. to 5275. Um, and that was, so like this would be your bearish. And uh, if you wanted to close that out, what are we looking at? 80 bucks. This is the 11. That one was costing us um, 43. Yes. 43. Yeah. Plus, uh, it would have been commissions. Um, so you can see. I might let that one ride out a little bit with uh, with that type of a build. Seriously. The market's not happy with that surprise build. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder what this, oh, is this in, in total stocks? So when they break down everything, maybe in terms of, you know, you got gas, you got crude, you're talking about 22 million barrels probably of uh, some type of crude or crude derivative. Um, That's some real action, man. It is, it is. I'm, I'm waiting for when they give us the full breakdown, but we'll jump back and we'll check in on that. So if we get over and we take a look at the, look at that. Oh, that we bomb. can't stop. I know. It's no. good. Go ahead. Go and ahead. If, you, uh, t if we take a look at the NASDAQ, folks, the NASDAQ, uh, once again, NQ9, the NASDAQ has some selling on it. It's dragging down the S&P, too. Um, you know, we, high out here was 72.45 and we're 71.62 right now. Uh, inside the NDX, let's see what the culprits are. So you get the Skyworks down 3.5%, Baidu's off 3.5%, uh, C-Trip's off 3.5%, Microchip's off 3.5%. Okay. Gainers, um, American Airlines up 3%. You got, uh Yeah, you get XL Energy up 2%. Monster is up 1 point, but Monster uh, Breverage up one8 and VeriSign is up uh, 1.6. Hey, can we check out um, Salesforce? They had their yeah, numbers last CMR. night and crushed C it out of the park, right? C CRM, yes. CRM. Um, seems like they, they had quite a little beat on their hands. CRM. Just, there we go. Yeah. yeah, so a little bit muted this morning as it pulls back. It had a high of 157.98. Maybe I can pull it up on the Thinkorswim platform to get their action last night because uh, we can go into their numbers. But and I think earnings-wise, they crushed it, man. Forget yeah, and they, so you can see what it's doing, too. I mean, this is where this gets interesting. So we had come down off the high uh, in March, and that April, May, June. Yeah, that'll be their last numbers. Yes. You know, I'm yep. right to 90 sure. days, yep. okay? yep. Um, you know, you're coming into that supply line, and that's a monster, 155. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Can we'll, we go into their news and yeah. um, pull up? Oh Maybe the top one, even. Uh, is this going to be their press release? No. Well, they... they Okay, sales. They're saying sales going to be 3.94 billion, 3.95. The estimate yeah, was 3.94. Right. Uh, it raised revenue projections for the fiscal year to 16.1 billion to 16.3, um, and the analysts had a 16.1. So that's what that's looking at. That, that's yeah, there's some bigger too. Um, I just remember I was startled by some of their earnings numbers. They crushed it in terms of earnings per share. I wish they had the full breakdown. Maybe we can find it at one of the breaks. Um, because this one, they, they lost it. Profit excluding some items will be 46 to 47 cents a share. On average, analysts projected 64, um, but revenue increased 24% to yeah. 3.74 billion. Um, we'll try and dig during Imagine one of the breaks because they, nice they little, did. Nice little piece of software, right? Tick down. Oh, man. I mean, they just, they, they, um, pretty remarkable in terms of their crush. Yeah, I can't figure out, uh, 
Uh, here we go. So first quarter adjusted earnings per share, 93 cents versus 74. The estimate was 61. So they came right. in with the quarter of 93, right. and they were looking for 61. Yeah. Um, and it seems like, you know, nothing was as in just this quarter. Everything in the future is probably good. And I actually thought, you know, maybe they're uh, bringing down expectations for, for such a beat this quarter to kind of tame things. Uh, it, it would make sense. Yeah. So if we take a look at that and we just pull these numbers up, you're going to see, you know, you're the talking growth about, is, yeah. this, is, this is just amazing, folks. So 2015, they took in $5.4 billion, which was fabulous. <laughs> Last year, they took in $13.3 billion, but this year, 16.2. I mean, what's remarkable is they're taking in over $3 billion a quarter <laughs> this year. I know. Um, next year, they're going to have in a quarter at the end of next year, almost what they took in for the entirety of 2015. Right. And um, look at that three-year growth rate, basically 25% across what the board. A business. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. Uh, that is a monster business. Let's take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here uh, in this market. And I suspect what we're going to see is that you got to a higher high today. You probably get lighter volume. Uh, there's a biotech that you don't see this too often, but this is sad. Down $33, trading at $4. Um, and I think that was like a billion dollar company as of yesterday because right oh now I think God. it's a hundred million Yeah, so you know you lose nine tenths of it. They were a billion dollar company okay. as of yesterday. So, so not a tiny, no. you know um, Yeah, so it looks like they clinical stage biopharma And look at the, the high for the year 53 the low today and that that high only you're talking about six weeks ago April Oh my god that's sad. Can we go into the news yeah. um, just to give a now they they I saw a stage two um, Let's see, so uh, drug results whiff. Maybe this is yeah. going to be, uh, man, 28 is far lower than that right now. I don't know when this was published. Um, oh, no, well, here, IFRX fell 83% like there is question. So is this another one? Maybe this is another company that's okay. involved, right, Chemocentrics, that they're down 30%. We're not even looking at them. We're looking at Inflarex, which is yeah. um, the one yeah. that's down 83 so it looks like it, some type of a more joint. than likely this is uh, we'll a you know one uh, drug wonder nice. right oh I, I, yeah. I, I, I let's see uh, there we go so um, after it reports IFX one did not show significant dose dependent effects in shine phase 2b study for treatment of hydrodenitis superbia so it's a skin disease inflammatory um, pretty remarkable man yeah Whew. That's a monster. If you're playing with those uh, biopharmas, farmers, you better have a fundamental understanding of where they're on the pipeline, or you better have some defined risk. And a high risk tolerance. Yes. Right. So you get uh, another one, Pivotal Software. This is down $7.60. Let's see what's happening with this thing. I see the word train wreck in there. In oh, there. my God. Yeah. Okay, this is for uh, oh. platform as a service solution. A company of cloud-based platform to build, so deploy, operate software, including enterprise in the automotive financial business. Yeah, financial services, industrial, looks like they have a cloud platform, but not, uh, maybe CRM still Inclusion. in their business. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the Dow up 99, NASDAQ down 9, S&P's up 3.5. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 104. Nasdaq's down 5. S&Ps are up 3.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Teddy. Hey, we got action Glad out here. Glad to be here. back on the show today. I'm sorry, what? Say glad to be back on the show today, oh. and uh, we got it right last week. Remember, we were calling for a little turn in the dollar, and we definitely, uh, since we spoke last, the dollar has taken a little bit of a beating going into today's trade. It has, it's, you know, and as I said a little bit earlier, Teddy, since last October, I, I, I you know, I, you trade the currencies, I just look at the dollar index, but this is the first time since then that we actually had, this is the fourth day down with volume, that they're actually selling it, do you know what I mean? Every time before this, it would dry up in a second. It's like, okay, there's no more sellers. So it's going to get interesting here. Well, the dollar thing. index has been a raging bull. So yeah. we, did, we came out you know, last week saying we're looking for a little turn. We got it. So now let's uh, break it down to see what's going to happen next. Cool. So uh, the numbers that uh, we had today, especially with the oil inventories, the PMI and stuff, we have unemployment coming out in the Eurozone as well as in the U.S. over the next couple of days. I think those are definitely going to be fundamental numbers to watch the dollar. Um, it may be a little skittish of a trade for the next uh, today and tomorrow into Friday. And uh, I think that the dollar, this little retracement, is probably going to run out of gas over the next few days in the short run. Oh, no. This Hold it. Stop the presses. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> right? Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so, no, I know. I, they know exactly. So, I mean, I, I think right now this is definitely a corrective bounce for the U.S. dollar. You know, it's been a raging bull. It's been time. You know, other, other currencies needed to unwind. Yeah. You know, so... There's no real news um, that, like, for instance, the euro uh, spiked up, up to 113 today before the, uh, the, our numbers came out. Yes. So you've seen, you've seen more market action since we spoke last week on, as far as on a volatility and range basis in the euro and other currencies than you've seen basically in a couple months, you know. So, and, and the funny thing is, like, when you look at the charts, especially, you have to look at the weekly and the, and the monthly to put things really in perspective because the daily makes it look like there's a lot happening in the market. 
But the reality is it's been in such a tight range that it's just a big, it's a, it's a small move, actually. Yes. You know? Yeah, there's no, there's no doubt, right. You know, um, now, how about the yen? Yeah. You know, the, the yen, you know, when you go back a few months, it had that big spike down for one day, but it looks like that thing wants to go after it again then. You know, I think that the, the support is definitely going to be tested in the dollar yen trade for sure. Okay. So I think that uh, obviously the sell off that happened over the past uh, week or so has been very dramatic. But I think that where if the dollar gains strength against other currencies, the yen is where it's still going to remain weak. I really believe that that trend is going to still continue to hammer that market a little bit, probably going into the G20 meeting. And I think that that's really where you're going to see the turn for uh, when it comes to the dollar yen trade because right now even came out on CNBC today which we've been talking about for a while now about how where the the US China tariff war has impacted China but it's the market's correct and now what they're showing how Vietnam is up their GDP is up 7 point something percent Malaysia's GDP is exploding you know um, as well as Chile Argentina and a bunch of other uh, countries as well right you know so so that being said, the G20 meeting, I think, is going to be something may come out of this meeting because you have all the world leaders and this is an economic forum. So what's at the forefront right now, the UK and uh, the EU with Brexit, as well as the US with its tariff war going on with China, Mexico and basically the world. And the world. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You know, so and I think that. I mean, these G20 meetings, a lot of times it seems like it's more puffery than anything. But for the first time in a long time, I think that we have all the big boys coming to the table um, and girls and uh, sitting down where I think that they don't have the, the opportunity to just mouth and jaw off at this meeting. I think this is one where they actually need to show some good faith that they actually want to bargain and negotiate and come to terms, because if it doesn't, this meeting will signal that we really are not coming to terms with Brexit in the EU. The U.S. tariff thing is going to continue for not just months, but will probably go into the next year and a half. You know, so and with that being said, I think we're going to see that the, right now there will probably be some good activity in the currencies for the next week or so. But as we get in towards that last week of June, I think we're going to really get a narrow, narrow trade, and because uh, the, the dollar is going to be in, in question for sure. Yeah. That's definitely. The one that everyone's looking at you know you know you know it's interesting folks too is that when you just brought up Vietnam you know up a uh, seven percent for the quarter what happens folks is that and, and they're onto this and if anyone that's an importer is onto this big what has happened is that as the factories move out of China into Vietnam which they've been doing for a while because when we when the Vietnam War ended there's a different document that Vietnam is under that it would be much harder to put a draft on Vietnam in general uh, and that's the big talk in China right now. Do you know what I mean? That, okay, we got to go really? to Vietnam because, you know, they already moved um, some factories to other countries. Well, just like some of them moved into Mexico, and all of a sudden Mexico is getting the chaff, okay? So we're going to see more of that, man. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line, so. For sure. Uh, for sure. Absolutely. And, and it's good for the consumer, too, because short-term pain means long-term gain, right? Well, the, the bottom line is, well, what consumer? I mean, we're going to be paying more money for everything, right? I mean, that's, well, you know. But that's in, that's in the short run. You know, as the market's correct and as, as, as these other countries start to become our suppliers, then things change again, you know? So at yeah, least that's... It should. I, 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 yeah, I, I get that. There's no doubt. I guess the real question is going to be, uh, then how quick do we change them again? You know, I, I, I think what sure. we're seeing more than anything is that, if I was running a larger company right now, I'd be really wary about moving at all. <laughs> you know, sure. it's like, okay. Soft uncertainty, you know, right. Yeah, yeah. Where, is, where am I going to put my couple hundred million dollars? You right. know, it's like, okay, um, maybe I'll just hold it. Uh, unless pocket. you're in the state of Illinois, then you won't want to move your company out of the state of Illinois because of the taxes. That's a guarantee. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, yeah. that's, you know, you guys have always had a problem with the taxes, but, uh, and it seems like it just keeps going, but. Guess what? I, 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 when you look at Greece, when I look, when I look at these other countries, that it's, the world is supposed to fall apart and they keep going. It's like, okay, you know, something's gonna come down and correct itself, or they just kick the can down the road more. You know. So. Well, and that's gonna that's gonna be a big thing for the dollar coming up too, because it's gonna start to affect the credit markets. You know, and that's when we hit the cycle where once the the interest rate market gets hit then the currency market gets hit, and then the equity markets will follow after that. 
Yeah, interesting, man. This currency market is something else, there's no doubt. And, they, you know, the, we haven't even talked about Brexit yet, you know? Yeah. What's going to happen? But right now, also, your viewers should be taking in mind that this little bounce in the, against the dollar, this is just a short-term corrective profit-taking move. It's by no means bearish the dollar and bullish these other currencies. Okay. It's just... It's just, an, you know, the trade. The trend is your friend no matter what. So you still have to look at, be very careful going against the dollar right now. And so, yeah, and, and in currencies in particular. Well, that's, that's good news, man. Listen, folks, you can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to speaking Thanks, to you next guys. Wednesday. Thanks, man. Thanks, Thanks Teddy. Too. Have a great Take one. Take care, guys. Take care. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 61. NASDAQ is down 23. S&Ps are off 2. We get oil down a buck 42, 52.07. Come right back, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that is transforming into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, self African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 63, Nasdaq's down 22, S&P's a flat, and uh, oil. Uh, we got the little smack down there. Watch out for falling prices. Didn't yeah. There used to be a Walmart slogan, man, falling prices in oil. 51.30. Uh, we were trading at 52.75 prior to that number. Yeah. Interesting thing here is kind of taking a look. So these were buck 50 spreads. Yeah. We're right to the penny right now at your max profit. All right, so here's your 11 AMs. This expires in five minutes. If you wanted to close out that trade, 
You could close it out, buy it back at 51.33. You lock in 142 of the 150 possible um, it's a good number, man. value you can get. If you feel like just letting it play out for five minutes, keeping in mind that right now it's fading at 51.25, you're going to get closed out at wherever that trades. Right. Um, and what they do, I believe, is they take the last five or ten prints, they average it. That way That's nobody right. can just pop the last print before right. the minute. Um, now, looking at the noon, a little bit more interesting in terms of what if you have this at noon? All right, we're right near the bottom. Yeah. 51.25 is your max profit. You're trading 51.30. You can buy it back, and you're paying this time about the 20 cents a premium, right? But you're locking in 123 um, of a possible 150, and you were putting up about $50, 55, um, yeah. 55 for that for that trade. Again, you could figure it out whether you want to, but uh, that's a long time, an hour to let that sit mm, no, if you wanted to, totally. right? And on the Bloomberg, folks, uh, this was pretty cool. So we got. We're the, we're the champs and uh, we gasoline. We got the three million bar barrel build in gas. And yeah. The build was 3.2, so yeah. uh, we nailed it. Speaking of nailing it, Basil Chapman. We got two webinars coming up. A week from tonight, Basil will be in there. I know you interviewed him last night. That was a great yes. interview. The Tide, talking about what's the Tide's coming in. It's going out. He's going to do a great 90 minute workshop for all of his subscribers one week from tonight. I encourage people to sign up for that. If you're new, 30 day money back guarantee over there. And, uh, you get access to three immediate archive webinars, so you can start watching those right now, Basil's newsletter, and then the following Wednesday, you'll be in there with Steve Roach. Check them both out, front page of TFNN. Folks, stay right there. You get Fast Market coming up next. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wow! Fast hour.